Hello, in this video we will understand about the peroxisome proliferator activated receptor co-activator. So it is known as for short the PGC1 alpha. So what is the PGC1 alpha? So let's understand about that. Its stimulation of mitochondrial biogenesis promote remodeling of muscle tissue to uh, a, uh, a fiber type. A fiber type composition that is metabolically more oxidative and less glycolytic in nature. So more consumption of oxygen, ability to more consume oxygen because the more uh, mitochondria in the A fiber type uh, composition in the muscle. So remember that thing. It is the basically fast, uh, fast, uh, fast type muscle. A fiber fast type muscle fiber will develop and participate in both lipid and carbohydrate metabolism let's understand about that all things this is a person which that is exercising hard exercise remember and this is the kind of stress on the myocyte muscle fiber and this muscle fiber we require some uh, this is heat a cold exercise as well as vascular uh, endothelial growth factor will uh, bind with the uh, specific receptor for example the endothelial cell require the vascular endothelial growth factor that is basically i am collecting collectingly uh, understanding anyhow this is the all thing is stress this stressor will activate the cyclic amp this cyclic amp is the second messenger intracellular and the protein 38 map kinase and akt3 so um, uh, cyclic amp will activate the protein kinase a and this protein kinase a will uh, activate the crap phosphorylation and the calcium calmodulin kinase will also activate this crap but this is uh, will lead to crap phosphorylation uh, will occur and on the other hand the akt3 phosphorylation to the pgc1 alpha in this way the pgc1 alpha will phosphorylate it is the meaning of this is the activation of that protein and it is important for the transcription of the several gene the nuclear receptor compressor ncor will inhibit this promoter but the crab will uh, crab protein will activate after the phosphorylation to promoter lead to PPA, uh, PPARGS1A uh, gene and this is the uh, responsible for the activation and production of the PGC1 alpha and this uh, phosphorylation will occur we have several mechanisms require the phosphate group through ATP etc the nutrient deprivation or lack of nutrient when the cell will hungry will lead to activate the a, uh, ATP decrease will lead to activate the AMPK due to the AMP increase. This AMPK will activate the PGC1 alpha. This is a phosphorylate and in this way the NAD plus will increase while the NADH decrease will lead to activate the CIRT1 gene deacetylation will occur. And on the other hand, the GCN5, the general control non-depressible uh, uh, 5-acetyl transferase enzyme will inhibit through acetylation uh, of that gene, which that is PGC1 alpha transcribable. Anyway, this activation of this PGC1 alpha gene uh, protein phosphorylate through this mechanism, all this stressor in this way, like fasting will activate the certain gene ESRA and FE2L1 and FE2L2 and PPRA uh, uh, correctly TFAM this TFAM will uh, transcribe to translate the protein which that is important for the mitochondrial biogenesis and the TFAM also itself regulate from the mitochondria through mitochondrial DNA and in this way, remember that things. Basic, basically, it is triggered via activation of the PGC1 alpha, the peroxisome proliferator activated receptor co-activator, the PGC1 alpha. 
this pgc1 alpha is important for triggering the application of the dna of the mitochondria and the transcription to translation to that protein which that is important for the biogenesis of the mitochondria let's understand about the ampk when decrease because the ampk increase due to the uh, fasting while ampk decrease due to the nutrient rich condition so for example the here is the mitochondria the medicine reservoir and nutrient like glucose and oxygen which that is the deficiency and efficiency will lead to amp ratio atp will increase will lead to ampk uh, alpha uh, and gamma and beta subunit will lead to activate the autophagy cyt1 and foxo and pgc1 alpha also trigger so remember we are focusing the pg uh, pgc1 alpha so the ampk increase due to the fasting will lead to trigger the pgc1 alpha while the ampk decrease due to the nutrient rich condition will inhibit the pgc1 alpha in this way the biogenesis of the mitochondria will decrease when you will eat while the fasting will trigger the biogenesis of the mitochondria so the mitochondria dysfunction and reactive oxygen species and endoplasmic reticular stress trigger due to the uh, ampk will decrease while due to the nutrient rich condition remember and the fasting will inhibit this while the mitochondria produce nucleotic factor kappa b signal inflammatory disease will inhibit when the ampk will increase while the trigger through ampk decrease so the function of pgc1 alpha is here is the white adipose tissue and brown adipose tissue this is the mitochondria so remember whenever you will not eat so in this way the fasting state plus exercise or stress and medicine like resveratrol will trigger this white adipose tissue to convert the uh, inhibit the uh, white adipose tissue to trigger the brown adipose tissue and the pgc1 alpha trigger due to this exercise stress medicine and lack of food so will lead to brown adipose tissue formation increase due to biogenesis of the mitochondria while the increase of the intake of food will inhibit this the brown adipose tissue is important for the weight loss inflammation decrease disease decrease and the thermogenesis and beta oxidation of fatty acid remember that things the thermogenesis will increase in this with the heat production more during the cold weather i hope you make sense about this this is the uh, pgc1 alpha physiology thanks for watching if you like my video please make sure to subscribe like and share see you in the next video for this time bye